If the virtues of persistence and determination could attain a living form, the resulting creation would almost certainly be a Pacific salmon. Coursing waterways from Northern California to the coast of Alaska, these magnificent fish, number five in species, Chinook and Sockeye, Coho, Humpback, and Chum. At maturity, they range in weight from two to 100 pounds. And in the cycle of their lives, one of nature's most compelling dramas unfolds. In the shallows of an inland stream, countless thousands of eggs usher in a new generation of Pacific salmon. After hatching, the tiny fish stay close to the protection of their rock and gravel nests. Their first nourishment is drawn from the bulging yolk sacs attached to their stomachs. Then later, after several weeks, they will search for food in the stream. Within a year, the fish will grow to a length of four to six inches. Created with the capacity to thrive in both fresh and salt water, the young salmon now await the moment to depart from the place of their birth. On a spring evening, under the protective cover of darkness, thousands of fish head downstream. They will travel with the rushing flow for days, and sometimes weeks. And though casualties are high, the majority will reach their destination, the Pacific Ocean. While making the necessary adaptations from a fresh to salt water existence, the most mysterious period of the salmon's life begins. In a matter of days, the fish will disappear into the waves of the Pacific for one to four years, depending upon the species. Swimming north in massive schools along the coast of Alaska, the fish then move out into the open waters of the sea, traveling in counterclockwise arcs that can span halfway to Japan and back again. During their oceanic travels, millions are taken by the commercial fishing industry and a host of natural predators. But those that survive reach maturity and size and strength while preparing for the last phase of their odyssey, the return home. The salmon's migration from the sea back to their birthplace is the epitome of instinct and relentless desire. Scarcely resembling the young fish that swam down these waters months or years before, the adults are so totally consumed with their quest that they will eat nothing as they battle upstream. No obstacle can discourage them. Equipped with powerful tails and torpedo-like bodies, salmon have been known to ascend falls more than 10 feet high. It is an all or nothing effort, and the hazards can be devastating. Yet the survivors push on, sometimes more than 1,000 miles bypassing hundreds of streams, creeks, and tributaries they encounter along the way.
finally, in the gravel beds of the exact waters where they had entered the world, the salmon stopped to lay and fertilize their eggs. A new generation ensured, their life mission fulfilled. They soon die. The entire cycle is nothing short of phenomenal. And for decades, science has undertaken to comprehend how the fish, after leaving the sea, can so unerringly navigate their paths home. Many of the answers now appear to be related directly to the salmon's unparalleled sense of smell. At the University of Washington, a mature Chinook salmon is anesthetized and electrodes attached to the portions of its brain that control the olfactory organs. Samples of water from its home stream and several surrounding tributaries will be used in the testing. We now know that in nature, every stream has its own fingerprint, a unique chemical composition that sets it apart from all others. In some cases, the differences between the waters can be significant, but often the chemical variances from one stream to the next are virtually imperceptible, except to the salmon. First, water taken from a stream less than a mile from the fish's birthplace is dripped into its nose, triggering only a moderate response. Water from another nearby source creates a similar reaction. Now watch as the salmon's home water is introduced. Tests like this have shown that the fish can accurately perceive chemical solutions as dilute as one part per billion. That's sensitive enough to detect a tablespoon of salt mixed into 18 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Perhaps the most graphic display of the salmon's incredible homing instinct and sense of smell came to light at the Prairie Creek Fish Hatchery in the Northern California community of Oric. It was here that an unexpected discovery revealed a migration journey almost beyond belief. On the morning of December 2nd, 1964, a two-year-old male coho salmon was found swimming among hundreds of juvenile fish in one of the hatchery's five concrete rearing ponds. Closer examination revealed that the back fin of this unexpected visitor had been clipped with the distinctive identification mark of the Prairie Creek facility, a mark carried only by fish raised in this pond and released to the sea the year before. The dislodged wire screen used to cover the pond's drain box provided an obvious but improbable explanation to the puzzling scene. Perhaps the fish, in an attempt to reach its home water, had entered through the maze of pipes in the hatchery's drainage system. Apart from a hoax, it was the only logical conclusion to be drawn. Yet a look at the route the fish would have taken defied all logic. Like all salmon released from the Prairie Creek hatchery, the fish would have returned from its time at sea here, at the confluence of the Pacific Ocean and Redwood Creek. Traveling upstream with the other survivors from its brood year, the migration route would lead three miles to the junction of Redwood and Prairie Creeks. Faced with a choice, the fish would pick up the scent of its home water and continue north. A mile and a half later, at this point, where the waters of Prairie and Lost Man Creek merge, a similar but more difficult decision must be made. Pausing here, the salmon picked up two familiar signals. 
The previous year, it had been released behind the hatchery in Lost Man Creek. Yet instead of retracing its path back to where its journey began, it chose to resume its northbound course. The reason for this unusual action could be found near the highway, 100 yards to the east. Well water, draining directly from the hatchery pond where the fish had been raised, trickled out through a culvert under US Highway 101. Normally this water would be absorbed by the porous ground before reaching Prairie Creek. But heavy rains that winter had created a small channel that carried the signal home all the way to the determined scent. Following the familiar scent, the fish would leave the creek to enter the shallow rivulet only about nine inches deep. Then swim through dense vegetation to the opening of the culvert. Home was near yet the difficulties to be encountered had only begun. After crossing under the highway, the fish would enter this storm sewer. Its final glimpse of daylight would illuminate a jump into this 12-inch pipe. Then in the darkness, the salmon would swim under the hatchery parking lot directly toward its final destination, only to meet a hopeless dead end. Under these walkway boards, less than 10 feet from the rearing pond, the fish would find itself trapped in a concrete flume. Yet spurred on by the overpowering scent of well water that poured in around it, the exhausted traveler refused to give up. Searching for an escape, it would locate the opening of a four-inch drain pipe. Then, squeezing its body inside, would ram its way through, until again being stopped, this time by a 90-degree upward bend in the pipe. Drawing upon its final reserves of power and will, the fish would make the turn to be faced once more with an overwhelming obstacle. The remaining three and a half feet of standpipe was covered with a framed screen weighing eight pounds, nearly five times more than the fish itself. As the battered fish swam among the juvenile salmon on that memorable December morning, doubts and questions about its journey filled the air like heavy mist. Finally, the decision was made to lift the boards covering the drainage flume. And moments later, speculation gave way to awe and wonder. Seventy-two coho salmon all bearing the fin clip of the Prairie Creek hatchery, were trapped within the flume. Each had battled alongside its indomitable companion to make all but the final leap back to the pond where life began.